Kidnappings and killings in Sultan Kaduna continues. The federal government is accused of aiding. And the fight against corruption continues as Lai Mohammed says. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thanks for joining us. The Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan Kaduna State Chapter, has accused the federal government of aiding killings in Sultan Kaduna. President of Khan, Samson Ayokunle, in a statement by his special assistant on media and communications, also warned that self-help might be the alternative should the government fail to put a stop to the killing of Christians in Sultan Kaduna. It also called for genuine intervention of the government in the continuous murder there and other states in the north. Joining us to take a look at this, uh, we're joined uh, by Motala Abubakar. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, also, good evening. Good evening to you. We're also hoping to get uh, Senator Sheo Sani join us in a little uh, bit. So let, let's get right to it. They've accused the federal government, can I mean, uh, Kaduna State Chapter, of aiding killings. Uh, after Garda uh, the president's aide, attributed the killings to criminal gangs acting on political and religious grounds. Is this a bit of a stretch, or would you say it's a fair accusation coming from Khan? Uh, good evening, our listener and viewer. I'm the spokesperson for the Coalition Against Killing in North. And uh, this particular killing that is currently taking place in the north is condemnable. And uh, we also feel that the government is not doing enough to bring an end to it. That is even what informed the formation of coalition against the north. However, to responding all to your questions, I think for Khan to describe the insecurity currently going on in southern Kaduna, as ethnic or has some religious corruption, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not proper. This is a general state of insecurity that the entire northern state today we are experiencing. And then we are working together with all stakeholders to see that there's an end to this particular killing. And then if you go through the, I mean, to, uh, if you are if you are keen observer of what is happening there, it's not true that there's a particular tribe targeting another one. It's a conflict that involves uh, farmers and conflict. So basically, it's a resource-based conflict. But uh, you see, they have so it's bringing politics or religious or even tribal uh, dimension to it. I think it's a calculated uh, uh, attempt out of mischief to actually uh, mislead the public. And then the truth of the matter is that this is a uh, resource-based conflict, which we are documenting. And then we are also putting government on pressure to act and bring an end to this killing in the entire part of the, uh, northern Nigeria. All right. So I, I, would love, I would Sabla love to Kaduna? take you up because the focus of the conversation, I understand you're the spokesman for the northern, uh, um, uh, the entire northern region, but we're looking at the peculiarities that is coming out from southern Kaduna. I will come back to you in a bit, but I'm told we're joined now by Senator Sheu Sani. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. For having me. All right, I'll put the same question I just um, I gave to Mr. Abubakar. Uh, can Kaduna State Chapter is accusing the federal government of aiding the killings there uh, after Garba Shewu attributed it to criminal gangs acting on political uh, as well as religious grounds? The question I asked Mr. Abubakar is, is this a bit of a stretch or would you say it's a fair accusation considering what's going on in that area? Uh, well, first of all, I think it is important that we call a spade a spade when it comes to the issue of these killings in northern Nigeria. Uh, the bandits killing uh, dozen people in Kasena and Zamfara states are terrorists. The same bandits killing innocent Nigerians in southern Kaduna are terrorists. 
Uh, it is wrong for us to consider the killings in Zamfara, Birdingwari, and Kasana State as an act of terror, then trying to find a way to rationalize the problem in southern Kaduna. Uh, people that are armed, raiding, it's killing innocent citizens, raping women and children, will be outwardly and utterly condemned terrorists. What is happening in southern Kaduna is not different from what's happening in other north part of Nigeria. But I've listened to some analysts in the last few weeks trying to color it in form of ethnic, religious, or whatever. These are simply terrorists raiding villages and killing innocent persons. And the government in the state and the federal level have failed to protect the people of Southern Kaduna simplicity. And also, they have made it impossible for the people in that part of the state to defend themselves. So, um, from what uh, you're saying, sir, the from idea what you're of saying, using revenge or ethnicity or religion does not come in. Terrorists are terrorists and it should be condemned and should be dealt with. So I'm presuming that you are, you, you are in agreement with Gadaba Shew um, when he said that that is what is going on. Because Khan is saying that it is a distortion, a distortion of facts. Well, with all due respect to my brother Gadaba Shew, I, uh, I was born in Kaduna State. I, I come from Kaduna State. Live in Kaduna State with my family, and I represent uh, Central for four years. And we have had uh, this history and experiences in the last three to four decades. But specifically, what is happening this time around is simply some bands of terrorists targeting innocent people in villages and uh, committing acts of mass murder. So. Whichever way you try to analyze it or assess it or address it, what is first and foremost is for us to agree that people are being mass murdered and uh, women are being raped and children are being killed. Then when you accept that, then we can now go to the next step of trying to find uh, solution to it, but in a situation whereby you find government spokespeople or apologies or people from all kinds trying to color the situation in Southern Kaduna, then you miss it. For example, when this band is killed in Zamfara, it's not called revenge. When they kill in Sokoto, it's not called revenge. When they kill in Kaduna, it's not called revenge. Why must you be saying that the revenge killing in Southern Kaduna? Why are the same terrorists that are killing people? So, All right. as far as I'm concerned, the position raised by Khan is valid. And the issues they have raised are issues that every conscious and responsible, a responsible person to align himself with. All right, uh, Let, let's go back to... Southern Karuna. All right, let, let's go back to Mr. Abubakar. Um, you were saying uh, something earlier before I um, welcomed Mr. Sani to the conversation. Uh, you said it is not peculiar to Southern Kaduna. Are you saying that the concerns being raised about the increasing number of deaths as a result of violent attacks is, um, is similar to every other part of the North? Um, um, precisely, and that was what the distinguished senator just uh, elaborated. So, and then what we are saying is that we need to be very careful so that we don't fall into the hands of mischief makers who are trying to turn this criminal, uh, the activities of this criminal into religious and tribal uh, uh, issues. So it's, uh, it has nothing to do with that. And so we have to agree on this and be on the same page. And then secondly, I think it's very important to also underscore the role of the media in this particular issue. So for the very first time, I think you people are doing an excellent job. Excellent job in the sense that you are bringing people who are on ground, who are also analyzing these things based on the facts on ground. 
and they're not allowing uh, one-sided narratives of the crisis. And I think this is what has been, what has happened over time that has also complicated and uh, add to the, to, to the crisis of Southern Kaduna. So we have to understand clearly the dynamics of the crisis before we can begin to provide solutions. But, but that seems to have defiled real understanding. This situation precedes the Boko Haram insurgency. We see killings in most parts of the North. And people are saying that um, what really is the situation? How can we understand it in order for us to find a solution? Fine. And uh, you see, we, we recognize that the primary responsibility of any, every, any government is the protection of life and property. And uh, in, in, in doing so, there are also stakeholders that need to join hands with government to bring about that, uh, that solution. Like what is happening in Kaduna, it's not only in, in southern Kaduna that this uh, budgetary is happening. It's happening also in the central where the senator represented us in the last four years, like in the area of Brunogwari. But you see, because the people accept that this is an act of criminality, and the, the, the stakeholders there, the traditional institutions, the religious institutions, the youth, collaborate and are working in active collaboration with the government. And, you are, uh, and, 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 and we are beginning to see success in that area. And what is happening in Southern Kaduna is a situation whereby the critical stakeholders are not cooperating with other stakeholders to bring about a lasting solution to this. And, I, and, and, and in trying to also create mischiefs, they are not giving it a religious and a tribal uh, relation, which we need to be very careful about. Okay, uh, let's go back to uh, Senator Sani. Uh, um, I agree it's a complicated situation uh, when Gad Rashew said it, but there must be some sort of solution that can be uh, achieved. Let's consider some options that have, I mean, some suggestions that have been made. What is the role of local leaders in Southern Kaduna and other parts of Kaduna in the efforts to end the killings? Because the government believes, according to uh, Shewu's statement, that if they help with the military, with intelligence gathering, uh, maybe an end to the crisis will be closer. Well, if we, if we are desirous of finding a solution to the problems of Southern Kaduna, it's not simply about gathering intelligence. It's also about being fair and just to the people of that part of the state. If we all accept that we are all uh, citizens of Nigeria, uh, coming from a particular state, then we all have to be treated equally, fairly, and justly. Now, uh, the people of that part of the state are actually being neglected and marginalized for the very fact that they have a different political opinion or political choice. Um, over the last uh, 20 to 30 years, though there are government that has intervened in addressing the problems and the challenges faced by people from that state. But Kaduna has been run like an apartheid state, where people from that part of the country are treated with disdain and with neglect. So that needs to be addressed. And secondly, if you are talking about peace, there is a need to have a consistency in terms of assembly of leaders, elders, youth, and women from that part of the state, in harmony with security agencies, so that uh, intruders and invaders and killers will be detected and nipped in the bud. But the approach over the years has been doing nothing and when there are killings or massacre, and then governments will pretend to be uh, uh, acting on the problem. Is that a fair Once the issue has gone out of the media, haven't they, 
Um, sir, when you say they are over. pretending, um, I, I'm sorry to interject, but when you say the government is pretending, is it that the, they haven't really done uh, something that can be seen uh, to be addressing the situation? Well, first of all, that part of the state has some reasonable presence of military locations. And uh, these killings also were happening at a time when there was lockdown and there was even security presence. So, so it appears very well that despite the presence of the military, the presence of the police and other arms of the state apparatus, the killings continue. So, right. as, as far as I'm concerned, the long-term solution to this problem is that government should be proactive. You shouldn't only sit down with leaders and elders and women and youth only when you have killings or crisis. Indeed. Let, let, let's, Peace let's... building and security in that part of the state should be institutionalized. It should be a daily affair to protect the indigenous people of that part of the state. All right. Let, let's bring Mr. Abubakar back into the conversation. Uh, one more suggestion, this time from Huriwa, the Human Rights, uh, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria. They are calling on President Muhammad Buhari to declare a state of emergency in Kaduna, particularly in southern Kaduna. Will this be a step in the right direction in your thinking, Mr. Abubakar? Well, I think uh, we need to be very careful about uh, some of the suggestions we are referring because sometimes it will result to solution looking for trouble. There is crisis going on in uh, Southern Kaduna, there's no doubt about it. But the problem is that the stakeholders need to recognize that every segment of the society needs to be treated fairly. And uh, also, they must also recognize or accept diversity in that part of the uh, state. Because failure to accept diversity is one of the uh, cause or a uh, factor of fueling the crisis. Like uh, each time you read story about uh, killing in Southern Kaduna, you think it's only the, the Christians that are being killed. And then on a daily basis, because of the organization that I'm running, we are receiving reports of uh, uh, Fulani uh, uh, people and even innocent travelers passing through Zanguankata, like what happened on the 10th of uh, June, which led to the copy of the 11th of June, was that uh, the, 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 the active people went to the Fulani settlement, they, 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 they killed about uh, 14, 14 of them, they burnt their, you know, their houses, including children. And we have all these things. But you see, when the when Sukapu, that's supposed to represent the people of Southern Kaduna, su supposed to come out and condemn the killing, but th that killing was not even uh, mentioned. And as if nothing, nothing happened. And then the, 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 the people who, 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 who suffered this uh, casualty, you know, certainly. You know, I, I didn't want to um, uh, go to that angle, but you keep insisting that it's a general thing. And then we have these groups come up to say it looks more like uh, even words like genocide, words like um, ethnic cleansing are being used. So what is being done by your group and others to streamline the narrative, because there is concern about the narrative that's being given to what is going on in Kaduna uh, by the federal government. What narrative would be the appropriate narrative, and how will that help us to begin to look for a way forward? Because Precisely. with emphasis on narrative, it's not really my thinking, you know, helping us move forward. That is exactly what we are seeing. And uh, what I'm saying in essence is that uh, the stakeholder in that part of the state must stand by the side of the truth. All life matters, irrespective of uh, uh, religious or tribal differences. So, and if you are looking for peace, the first thing you have to look for is justice and fairness. 
And this is something that is lacking in that part of the state. As much as we recognize that government has a very greater role to play in this, the people who, who are living among themselves must also accept to live together in peace. So this is, this is fundamental to, right. in, in, in looking for a way forward. All right, let's go back to um, Senator Sani. Um, what would be your reaction, your quick reaction, that is, to the PDP asking um, federal government to respond to comments by the chairman of uh, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Army, that's uh, Senator Alin Dume, that Buhari's administration underfunding of the military is responsible for the insecurity challenges in the nation at a whole as a whole. Is better funding needed? And how do we really go about ensuring that the army need, gets what they need? Well, um, first of all, from my experience from 2015 and 2019, to be fair, it is not right to say that uh, President Muhammad Buhari has not been funding the army. Army has always gotten everything they ask from the Nigerian government. It is one aspect of the budget that is fully funded, maybe after INEC. I have not seen any situation where the army will make requests and then they were not given. I can remember a time where they made requests of about a billion dollar removed from the excess crude account. Even at that point, the procedure was not followed. Due process was not followed. But yet the, the nation agreed that we are being faced with a serious emergency. And uh, they were let go. So it's not true that the president or the government has not been funding the army. It's simply an excuse. Uh, everything they requested, they get it. But the actual thing is that the service chief has failed, has failed to produce, to protect the country. Look at the budget of the Nigerian Republic, defense budget. Look at the defense budget of Chad. Look at the defense budget of, uh, of Benin Republic. It's not up to one over 50 of Nigeria's defense budget. When, how were they able to protect and defend their country? against all these invaders and bandits and insurgents. So it's not the issue of money. So the right. point is that the military chiefs have failed to protect and defend the country, and we are at the mercy of bandits and insurgents and killers. That right. is a simple situation. Um, uh, your final thoughts on the matter, Mr. Abubakar, the issue of the threat uh, being um, given by Khan that they might resort uh, to self-help if government fails to put a stop uh, to the killings in Southern Kaduna. What would be your advice to them pardon, as pardon? an alternative? Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the threat by the Christian Association of Nigeria okay, that okay. um, self-help is something they might resort to if the government fails to put a stop to the killings in, in that area. What would be your, your advice to Khan in this regard? Well, I think uh, Khan should not play to the garden. So this issue requires tax. It requires cooperation. It requires synergy on how to overcome this thing. And uh, Khan should also know that it's not only Christians that are faced with this uh, Killings. Even the Muslims living in that uh, part of the state are living in a state of fear. And they are also calling on the same government to come and protect them because on a daily basis they are being killed by the same criminals. Okay. So, and uh, if you are suggesting this, I think it's like you are giving access to people to take law into their hands. And they should also know that no single group have monopoly of violence. So this kind of uh, statement should not be coming from a responsible organization like Khan. I think uh, that it's overreacting, over and that they should take the part of dialogue and uh, constructive engagement for us to find a lasting solution to this. All right, same to you, uh, Mr. Sani. What is your final thought on the matter in 30 seconds, if you can, please? Well, uh, first of all, I think it's important for the government, both the state and the federal, 
to live up to their responsibility. If human life doesn't matter, nothing else matters. So as far as I'm concerned, that is my final word on it. Thank you very much uh, for coming on the program, Sars. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Well, we'll take a short break now, and when we return, Lai Mohammed says the fight against corruption is not waning. We'll be back. Stay with us. <laughs>